This is section 41 that, as we mentioned from section 40, actually has two slides in it. But it's going to be rather lengthy because we're looking at an actual entry summary. A couple of things to state first. This is an actual entry. So some of the fields have been blocked out to create some anonymity for the actual importer. The fields that were blocked out were actually populated prior to our getting our hands on it. The other spoiler alert to speak is that this is the importation of a marble statue from Italy. Okay, let's jump in. First off, the entry number. That's block one, upper right hand corner. It's an 11 digit code. The first three digits is the filer code. Whoever filed the entry has a three letter code assigned to them. Followed by the seven digit entry number which can be assigned randomly by the filer and then one check digit. Block two, the entry type. We see here in our example 01. 01 is a consumption entry filed via ABI, Automated Broker Interface. Some other examples. An entry coming in under quota with a visa requirement would be 02. If this entry included products that were subject to anti-dumping or countervailing duties, it would be 03. An informal entry would be 11. All different entry types have a specific two number code. 3 is the summary date that was blocked out, but it's the date by month, day, and full year, four digit full year, on which the entry summary is filed with CBP. Block 4, 054 in our case, it's the three digit numeric code that identifies the surety company on the bond, the insurance company, as we used as an analogy many sections back. Block 5, the bond type. 8 is a continuous bond, 9 is a single transaction bond. We see an 8 here, so this importer has a continuous bond, we can see that. 6, that's the port code, which is the port where the merchandise was entered under an entry or released under an immediate delivery permit, that 3461, it's a four digit code. The entry date is in block 7. It happens to be January 5, 2018, in our case. Block 8 is the importing carrier. We see the MSC with the name of a ship. MSC is Mediterranean Shipping. That's a steamship line. Second largest in the world, actually. 9, mode of transport, which as we see, and we mentioned previously, is a two-digit code. In the case of a vessel, it's 11. We know this came in via ocean freight. It came on a ship via MSC, so the mode of transport has to be 11. Country of origin? IT, Italy. We said we'd see Italy, actually, from the previous section. 11 is our import date, which makes sense because that's Jan 4, 2018. The entry date was done the next day. This is a little bit interesting because, as we said, with ocean freight, an entry can be done five days out. For some reason, that didn't happen here. So we can see that clearly from the entry summary. 12, bill of lading number, MSC, CUV, another letter, a couple of more numbers. That's a med shipping bill of lading number. 13, that manufacturer ID. Every company overseas that is ever exported to the United States is going to be assigned a manufacturer's ID number. Here it is here, ITG1, so forth. 14, exporting country, Italy, once again. We have an export date of December 7th. That makes sense. It takes about three weeks to get across the Atlantic from Italy to the United States. We have no IT number or IT date. No missing docks in 18. That's good. The foreign port of lading, 47531. That's a port in Italy, probably La Spezia, but... Really not sure, to be honest. The U.S. port of unlading is 2811, New York, New Jersey port. Block 21 is the location of the goods. It's a terminal, which is appropriate given that it's ocean freight. Block 22, 
The consignee number says same. It's the same as the importer number as we see in field 23, which starts with an 81, 1968, on it goes. Block 24, no reference number. It's not required, actually. 25 is what we have blocked out, the ultimate consignee name and address. 26 is the same, blocked out. 27, the line number. There's only one here because there's only one statue. But if this container contained 50 products with 50 different classification numbers, it would go from 01 to 50 in column 27. 28, description of the goods, original sculptures and statues. 29, the HTS number, which we see is 9703.00. More on that in just one second. Column 30, the gross weight, which is 5,000 kilos. That's a pretty big statue there, but that's the actual weight. Column 31, net quantity in HTS units. It happens to be the number, which is 1. 32, the entered value, 101,200 and 19. But before we move on from there, take a look over where we have blocked off. It says invoice value 121219. That's $121,219. Less NDC. That stands for non dutiable charges. That's the international freight that can be deducted. Seems a little high, but that's fine. $20,000. And then NEV. That stands for net entered value. That's why we see 101219 next to NEV and 101219. That's $101,219 in column 32. That's a very good illustration of how we talked about getting to the correct entered value. It's all done right here. 33 is the HTS rate. Original sculptures and statues are duty free. Below that, however, and we'll come back to this in just one second, we see 0.3464% and 0.125. Moving over to the left, we can see that that's the merchandise processing fee and the harbor maintenance fee. Actually, the second slide in our two slide section talks more about that in greater detail, so not to worry. Block 34, column 34, that's the actual duty owed. We see 0.00. .00. That's because there's no customs duty on sculptures. However, the merchandise processing fee came out to 350.62, and the harbor maintenance fee came out to 126.52. That's an actual amount that has to be paid regardless of whether goods are duty free or not. That's where that goes. Talking some more about merchandise processing fee, we're going to skip ahead for just one second. But have a look at block 39. Other, that's 477.14. That's the sum of the MPF, merchandise processing fee, and the harbor maintenance fee. That's the only duty that has to be paid. Because as we see in block 37, there is no customs duty. However, 39 has to be broken down over on the left-hand side where it says other fee summary for block 39. That's where MPF goes at 350.62, and the harbor maintenance fee goes at 126.52. Those two numbers in the middle, 499 and 501, that's a specific customs assigned number that identifies MPF and HMF. We can see the total of the other fees at 477.14. We see the total entered value right above that, which corresponds to what we saw in column 32 and the net entered value that we calculated and then the total in field 40 at 477.14 and then some declarations as we also spoke about 36 41 the declarant's name that can be signed by the customs broker we can see there where it says attorney in fact that means a customs broker did this entry and then the broker's reference number in 42 and in 43 the broker's file number that's blocked out we did that intentionally this is what a 7501 looks like completed detailed stuff that depends on all of this upstream information that we've been harping on for 
41 sections in Module 9. This is the culmination of all that work. A clean and released entry without any requirements for inspection or documentation review or anything like that. This is our goal in the end. Because we like to be thorough, let's talk a little bit more about a supply chain perspective entitled MPF and HMF. First discussed in Module 4 on sourcing during the section on landed cost, both the merchandise processing fee and harbor maintenance fee are important components of the import fees charged by U.S. Customs and Border Protection, independent of any customs duties that are owed. Second paragraph, and as we just saw, the MPF is an ad valorem fee charged by customs at .3464% of the value of the goods. At the time of taping this section, because they can change, as we note in the lower right-hand corner, MPF has a minimum charge of $25.67 and a maximum of $497.99. HMF, which is only on ocean freight, by the way, hence the name harbor maintenance fee, is 0.125% of the goods value, and the proceeds from HMF go to the maintenance of U.S. harbors, development projects, etc. As noted in the previous 7501 example, we just talked about this. It should be fresh in our minds. MPF and HMF rates and charges appear in blocks 33 and 34 respectively. Additionally, and we talked about this in some detail, the total of MPF and HMF must be shown in block 39, while an itemized explanation of the charges must be shown in the block entitled Other Fee Summary for Block 39. Finally, and we said this explicitly, in that summary block, MPF and HMF must be identified by their numerical codes, which are 499 and 501, respectively. Two slides in a section that really represents the culmination of all of our work. Hopefully, what we demonstrated here is a reflection of how important all that upstream work really is. We're going to stop here, and when we come back, we'll talk about customs holds, the delay of customs release of goods, documentation reviews, and actual physical exams. See you then.